kind of at a loss for words. I mean, what a game. Um, expected it to be a tough, grind it out type of game. Knew it was going to be a really difficult game and obviously came down to a possession for possession game and fortunately ended up on the on the right end of the scoreboard um, again. So we'll uh, <laughs> we'll take it. Hey, what did you draw up there on that, uh, the one that you guys scored? And, uh, it didn't look like it was according to plan. It was to for the beginning of for the most part. Um, you know, we just the way they pressure and overplay had Kier going up and felt like they'd overplayed and on KT she had a couple reads on it, throw it over the top to Kier if the kid was denying her to you know, to come get the ball. And I thought we had a step. Um, I thought we had a step and we should make the throw and then obviously we have Jade down there too, so it's kind of a read by KT. But when she first started coming up, I mean, I was kind of sitting there saying, "KT, we got her, we got her." But uh, we threw it a little bit short. Um, I think if we would have thrown it up a little bit higher, I think Kira probably would have would have had it. But Kira, you know, was a little bit short. Kira came over, you know, to kind of grab it, and obviously, you know, Jade's down there. Jade's down there anyway. So not exactly as designed, but in the in the I guess right direction, and uh, ends up working out with. Uh, it ended up almost, you know, being a touch pass to Jade. <laughs> How much does the stomach sink on the possession after that when they have the open look at the layup that comes up? Short? Yeah, a ton. I mean, we knew they were going to run a back screen. I mean, we, we talked about, I mean, even the previous, the one before that, um, I mean, it felt like as a coaching staff we knew we tried to, you know, articulate, but it's kind of hard to, and, um, you know, in a perfect world we, we, switch, we switch the back screen. Um, but even so, I mean, that kid can raise up and go get it, so I don't know if it would have made a difference with, with Paige down there or not. Um, but uh, I didn't think it was, I felt like we knew what was coming. It's just a matter of, you know, <laughs> fortunately she, she short-armed it and, and missed it. <laughs> I mean, just to be able to pull out, uh, it's, it's not the 20-point win you had the other day, but it just kind of falls in line with uh, the rest of them on this uh, six-game winning streak. Um, just what is it about this team right now that's able to win these close ones? Well, you know, I, I, I look at today's and, you know, if the kid ends up making that or we end up short end the stick, this is one of those games where you're looking at a lot of different things and kicking yourself where we had opportunities that we shouldn't have even been in that position. And so, um, you know, I feel like we kind of, you know, we were able to, to weather the storm and, and come out with the, with the win, but there's a lot of things we've got to tighten up that honestly should have, would have, could have cost us the game. And, um, you know, I think it's easier to go back and watch the film now having won the game, um, but, you know, it would feel a whole lot worse if you're watching those things, things that I felt like we could have controlled and that um, we just didn't do a, a, a good job with. I mean, um, just understanding personnel at times um, and how they needed, how they would score and still allowing them to be comfortable doing that and then uh, gave up some key offensive rebounds, um, some huge offensive rebounds. Like, we can't do that. You know, I think there's just, there were a lot of things that, you know, fortunate that we won, but we've got it. We've we definitely have to tighten some things up um, if if we want to continue to uh, to keep building on this. Coach, you mentioned right what could have been the what have shows and could have and a lot of those opportunities. You go from slow start, you outscore them on a 22 to two run to end the first, and then between the second and third quarter, you go seven of 31. So yeah. I know, like it's it boggles your mind as a former player and coach. What is it sometimes about this team that gets hot and then goes ice cold and just kind of can't seem to find a steady even keel rhythm? Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of hard to put your finger on, but uh, certainly wasn't pleased to spot him 7-0 to start the game. I mean, that's something like it can't happen. Like we, we just we can't do that. We can't continue to do it. We did it too much prior to conference. Um, we it just can't happen. And then we we come in and they score two points the rest of the quarter. We get hot on the offensive end of the floor, and um, but then we get sort of comfortable again, or I don't know what it is. Um, I think more than anything, just the mentality. You just have to, you know, it's pedal to the metal. You got to just stay on it. And um, but I do think in the second quarter there, you look at we only scored five points, but we had so many opportunities. I mean, we missed a lot of easy shots, um, point blank shots, and so um, and then you look on top of that. I think we had missed. 18 shots and only had two offensive rebounds at halftime. Um, and we had no free throws. So, you know, we're not getting to the free throw line. Um, so I think just kind of the culmination of all that, and then it affected us on the other end of the floor. You know, we were missing some easy shots. We probably were in our feelings a little bit about that they're not going down. And then we allow them to get a rhythm on offense and come out and be comfortable and, and do what they want. And um, so obviously wasn't wasn't ideal. <laughs> I know I feel like a broken record, but 
Yeah, right. Good teams find ways to win these kind of games, right? You didn't have your maybe your B minus game today, which is still one. How do these little victories help keep this locker room continuing to believe in itself and know that hey, if a storm does come, we sail through them and we can keep doing it? Well, winning always helps everything, right? A little bit. Um, so I think it's it's much easier to watch this film and to talk about it, knowing that we won. But um, I think it just continues to uh, I don't know, reiterate the things that we always talk about. This. The conference is going to come down to all the little things. Every single game is going to come down to little things. And I thought there were a lot of little things that we we needed to do better tonight that we're capable of doing better, that we, we should have done better. Um, and, you know, fortunately we were able to still win um, not doing that. But um, I think we're fooling ourselves if we think we can keep that up too. So I, I definitely th – and I think our kids know that. They know – um, you know, when you're in practice every day and you're talking about game plan and they, they know what we're doing, they know when, um, you know, we're doing the things that we need to to be successful and when we're not. And we just, we got to find five people on the floor at one time to consistently, consistently do it. I feel like the Flames were reading Lacey really well when it came to the steals. That's usually something that um, we see from her, but it seemed like Paige kind of took that over. We saw a lot of uh, feistiness from her tonight. Can you kind of talk about that? Yeah, I think coming into the game, we knew it would be a collective effort um, handling their pressure. Um, you know, knew that they would probably double team Lacey, try to just keep us from even getting the ball to her. Um, so, you know, we had talked about it ahead of time of just, you know, Paige, Kira, Angel. It's, it's going to be a collective effort. And I thought um, everybody kind of had their turn at moments. Um, you know, it's just weathering the storm with constant pressure. Um, we knew it was going to be like that for the duration. I thought Kira did an outstanding job when, you know, she ended up seeming to take the bulk of it because she was the inbounder and when it went back to her, nobody was on her initially. Um, but I thought for the most part, I thought we did a pretty good job handling it. It's, um, you know, it's something that you're not used to for every game. It takes, takes you out of your comfort zone. But I thought for the most part, it didn't really turn us over. Um, which is what they usually do to teams. So I thought for the most part we, we handled it and Paige and Angel and Kira stepped up and, and helped Lacey in that role. Uh, for Kira, uh, you're, you're drawing up a potential game-winning play for her. She's a freshman and she has that type of game where she makes all three of her threes. She's 6 of 10 from the field. Just not a common freshman when you're able to do that with uh, some of the, the, the older people you have on this team. Yeah, I mean, I really trust her. You know, she earns it every day in practice. You know, I think, uh, you know, coming in, we thought she was going to be somebody that could really impact us right away. Um, but until they get here and, you know, they're really in your system, you know, it takes everybody different amounts of time. And um, she's just somebody that's that's really picked things up quickly. She has a, um, you know, just a really good maturity about her. And she just has, you know, she's been around basketball her whole life. And you can, you can just tell the way she plays. She's... Um, She's not a typical freshman out there, um, and I trust her. And, and that comes from what she does every day in practice. I mean, every day in practice, you know exactly what you're going to get out of her. Um, I trust the ball in her hands. I trust her to make decisions. Um, and she's a great teammate. You know, she's we've, we've asked a lot of her. You know, the ball's in her hands a lot. She's making decisions. Um, but oftentimes, she's guarding the other team's best player, too, depending what matchups are. Um, so I think, you know, she does a little bit of everything for us. And um, I think more than anything, just appreciate how she approaches stuff every day. Practice, game, she's so locked in. Um, you know, she, she understands what we're trying to do. She's a great teammate. She's selfless. And, um, you know, I think, you know, everybody around, whether it be her teammates or us, it's, she's put herself in a position where we trust her. Again, one last one quick. Um, I know you got your, right, you got your call from last year that came back, right? It'll make this year's transition a little easier for you. Uh, I guess, can you just remark about how it feels to be a coach who brought this collection of new talents and transfers and freshmen with your core and how they're all meshing. I mean, like to, to be at this point in the season with these kind of games to see your collection brought in with the core four and kind of how that's worked out. Yeah, obviously it's a it's a lot of new kids over the course of the two the two seasons. Um, and that's always that's always a challenge. But um, I think collectively it, it's been a really good group. I think um, the kids we brought in this year as, as freshmen and even transfers, I mean, obviously we had some needs and you're trying to go out and, and fill those needs as, as best as you can. Um, not just from a sheer talent standpoint, but just kids that you feel like aren't going to fit well, um, you know, in your system and your culture and just everything that you do. And so um, I think collectively it's been it's been a great it's a great group of kids, a really good uh, really good teammates, um, you know, to each other. And um, 
you know, they care a lot about each other and, you know, we just got to continue to continue to work hard, continue to get better and, and hopefully our best days are, are still still ahead of us.